Spirit Force. I hope that you're doing super well, that you're keeping warm and treating your parents super well and your family. I miss you so much. Today, we are going to learn about working with fractions. I hope by now that you have written the date and the heading in your workbook and that you've already cut, uh, stuck in your term three cover page um, and that you're all ready to watch this video one. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to learn about how um, shapes can be divided into equal sections. We've already done this a bit last term, but let's have a look at this picture now. Okay, so in this picture, we have got a shape that is divided into one half up at the top. And remember that you have got a numerator and a denominator. The numerator tells you how many pieces are colored in. And there, there's one piece that is colored in. And underneath, you've got the denominator, which tells you how many pieces there are all together. In the first shape, it is divided into two equal pieces, and so it is divided into one half. The second shape is in thirds. You can see that there are three equal pieces. One of them is colored in. The next one is fourths or quarters. How many pieces are they all together? Yes, there are four. Then we have fifths. There are how many equal pieces? Five. How many of them are colored in? One. Then you've got sixths, sevenths, and eighths. Okay, now this is nothing new. We've learned about this before. Okay, so just be very careful of how you write it as a fraction. And if you look at the top part of page 159, it also tells you how to write it in words, and how to write it as a fraction, and also tells you how many equal parts there are all together. Okay, so now you're going to do exercise 91a. The questions are as follows. It says each diagram is divided into equal parts. Look at the diagram and then answer the questions. So for question one, it says how many parts is A divided into? So you've got to see how many are there in total in that shape. So let's do the first one together. How many pieces are there all together? There's one, two, three, four, there are five. So the answer to A is there are five, um, or A is divided into five parts. Okay, then B, how many parts of A are shaded? So you can see there that one of those triangles is red. And so how many are shaded? It is one, um, yeah, one part of A is shaded. And then see what fraction of A is shaded. Now remember when it's asking for a fraction, it is asking, you can either write it in words, so you could say one fifth, or you can write one over five. You are now going to do questions two, three, and four on your own, and they are just asking for the next shapes, B, C, and D. Okay, now we're going to explain question 91b. And so it says there, co um, copy the diagrams carefully onto square paper. You don't need to because you've got the, um, the hard copy that you just need to stick into your book. So um, if you go to school, you would have gotten a hard copy. Otherwise, you can print it at home because it's on Collaborum. And then... You have to do what question one asks you to do. So question one says, color in one third of A blue. So you've got to look at that rectangle and you've got to see where is one third and color that in. Then you've got to color in for number two, one half of B red. For number three, one quarter of C yellow and so on and so forth. Okay, so have fun with that. I just want to show you an example of how to do that. So for now, we have an example um, here. We've got a rectangle and say we want to color in one third of it. OK, now, if you have a look at the top, how many squares are there going along the side? You've got one, two, three. OK, so you can actually see there that if we go along those lines, the first whole row can be one third. So we can just color that in. And that is one third. 
Okay, so if, say for example, we have got 30 blocks, one third of 30 is 10, so you can color in 10 blocks. Or if one third of 18 is six, then you can color in six blocks and so on and so forth. Okay, now let's have a look at say fifths. If we want to divide this shape into fifths, how many rows do you think you need to color in? Well, if you want one fifth, you would color in the first row. Does it matter if you actually color in the first row or just the last row? No, because a fifth is a fifth, no matter where it is in the shape. So whether you color in the top half or a bottom half of a shape, as long as the shape is equal all around, it doesn't matter. Okay, everyone have fun doing exercise 91A and 91B. And please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. Have a great Tuesday and God bless. Bye.